My name's Nolan Swenson. I'm the urban conservationist for the Burley County Soil Conservation District, which owns the Minokan farm. And we're gonna start with the rain barrels first. And with the rain barrels, most of the work is actually gonna be done when you get home. So those are gonna go relatively quickly and I'm gonna build one right along with you. Okay, and so I think I'll just talk about the whole process first before I get too far ahead of myself. So basically where there's three holes you have to drill, you have to drill into the bottom of your barrel and then you'll have to drill an inlet into the top of the barrel and then, and that's what you slip this other little rubber washer in. And then when you get home, so this is meant for a two inch by three inch gutter, which is a standard size gutter. Some are, the ones I have at home are three by four inch, they're bigger ones. But basically you drill with a large hole saw into the side of your gutter and then you crunch this down and you slip it in the hole and then it pops out and you can see that it'll collect the rainwater. A portion of it, it goes through the middle, but this cup catches some of it. And then it diverts it. I think this is called the diverter. Then it'll run into this barrel. And basically, you know, I'm gonna drill my spigot on the front so it sticks out from my house. And then if I drill this into my gutter here on my house, you know, I'm gonna want my inlet, you know, kind of right here at some odd angle. So when you go home and you finally have this all set up how you want it, you drill this in, put it at the same level, and then you drill this hole so it all ends up nice. So in the directions that come with it, which tell you everything, they say to drill this hole 10 inches up from the bottom. And I didn't call the owner to ask why, but my thought is if you drill it 10 inches up from the bottom, you just turned your 55 gallon barrel into the 30 gallon barrel and you can't access this water. But someone said maybe it's just so it keeps a couple hundred pounds of weight in there so it doesn't blow away. But you just gotta, wherever you wanna drill it, you can drill it. I drilled that one that I made yesterday four inches from it and then I drilled it five inches, but I don't know, 10 seems excessive, but somebody did do that and that's fine, so. And when we drill this bottom hole, I think you have to go really slow because if you don't, you kind of wobble the hole out too much and that little rubber stopper doesn't seat very well because mine leaked yesterday. And you'll kind of have to drill into the barrel a little bit and then your holes all get clogged with plastic and then pull it out and do that a couple times. So there you should be able to see a hole. I drilled mine five inches up that time. And then if you have, I took a jackknife and I kind of cleaned out that hole a little bit because it's some burrs in there, which might be the reason that my one yesterday leaked. But. So once you got that done, you take this, I just call it a rubber washer. It's got threads on the inside and a little pointer. This is where I screwed up. The pointer goes on the outside and it points down. So have that point straight down like that. So then when you've got that on the spigot, there's kind of a there's threads that are kind of, are they're shorter and then longer. The ones that are longer and closer together, they get screwed in. And to make it easy on yourself, take a, take a drop of that Dawn dish soap and put it on the threads of this and it spins right in there. And then basically the little point is just to hold it so you can spin it on or it starts to spin. So it was a lot harder when that little point was on the inside yesterday. So now when you get home, you're gonna, probably set this up on a couple cinder blocks or at the edge of your deck somewhere where you can get a water can under it or hook a hose to it, right? So when you have this set in place, then you take, and maybe before you do that, three inches down, I went from the very top of the barrel, you drill with the medium hole saw, you drill a hole again, and then you slip this little rubber, well, I just call them rubber washers for lack of a better term. Slip that in that hole, you got the one you got there, and you just, whichever hole saw, you can just see which one they match up with. So you're gonna drill it. You know, if this is, if this is sticking straight out from my house, here's my gutter against my house. I'm gonna kind of stick it maybe right here at this odd angle. And then with the large saw, hole saw, depending on which, you know, this is a two inch by three inch 
thing here, depending on the orientation of your, whether you drill into the side of your gutter or the directly into your gutter. <coughs> You're gonna drill with the large hole saw into your gutter. So then you drill that big hole, you kind of bend this in on itself again, and you stick this in there and it pops out and you can see that it makes a cup to catch some of the water. And then there should be two self-tapping screws. So the, this big flange will be on the outside of your gutter. You take those two self-tapping screws and screw this to your gutter. So you can imagine in real space, it'll be somewhat maybe like this. And then this, let me suck that together a little bit. Now I got that going in there and this is going in here. These should be level. So there shouldn't be like a drain like this. And you can imagine that a gutter is going here and this is inside the gutter. So, and this expands a lot so you got some flexibility. But, but just make sure before you, especially before you drill into your gutter, you need to know exactly where this is gonna be. So, and then I guess the only thing is, uh, you know, maybe you're gonna just disconnect the flow into the barrel in the winter time. Or what they say is you can undo this and just flip this upside down and then it all runs around it. So you won't catch any water in the winter time to freeze and break the barrel and push your gutters out and things, so. But, but basically there's really, it's pretty minimally, minimally invasive to your gutter. I thought you had to really do a lot of gutter work to build a rain barrel, but the way they make it, it's pretty simple, so. You know, make sure it's on a, like a sturdy, area because when this barrel is full it'll weigh like probably almost 450 pounds so that's a pretty quick project you know like i said most of the works when you get home so